Rama Nation, Chris Cobain here bringing you another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle. I'm uh, bringing you another mono battle here. I've been bringing you guys quite a few of these lately. I had a lot of them uh, last Monday, so, you know, might as well just get them out there while I can. Um, again, I'll be using my mono fighting team here going up against, obviously, a mono water team. So let's take a look at the teams. You guys know mine by now. We got Mean Chow, Scrafty, Infernate, Machamp, Toxicroak, and Sock. And my opponent... Hiroshi, aka J Sims, is going to be bringing a Sharpedo, a Lapras, Swampert, Starmie, Megastoice, and Waylord, which is actually pretty cool. This team is threatening all over. Obviously, uh, Sharpedo's very, very powerful. Starmie's a threat. Blastoise is super strong. Um, Swampert, really tanky, really powerful. Lapras and Waylord are both uh, not used as much, but a uh, Spec slash Scarf Swampert with Water Spout can hit really hard. And Lapras has multitude things it can do. Uh, like support, it can be a Dragon Dancer, it can be a special set. Uh, you never know what you're going to see from him. So, uh, this was a really good battle, and uh, let's go ahead and get right into it, guys. So, my first thought um, there's really nothing he's going to have outside of maybe Sharpedo that's going to be able to uh, be an anti lead to, uh, to me and Chow. So, I might as well lead with that. He's going to lead with his Waylord. I was immediately a little nervous because I know this thing can be Choice Scarf. Um, first thing I'm going to do here is fake out. This was a good lead because I knew I could at least uh, take out its water spout here a little bit with the fake out. I decided to stay in. I did, I'm not going to switch anything to an eruption, any, or eruption, excuse me, a water spout anyway. Good job, Chris. So I'm just going to go for a high jump kick, and it turns out I outspit. I don't know if I outspeed the scarf or he just wasn't scarfed. Either way, I get that kill. That's a good start. Now he's going to bring in Sharpedo. Like I said, Sharpedo is super powerful. Uh, I outspeed turn one, so I figured why not go for a U turn. He doesn't go for it, he goes for the Protect to get the speed boost, kind of figured he would. Now I don't really, really want to switch anything in to a Waterfall. If I got the U-turn off, I guess I would have went into Scrafty, but I don't really, really want to U-turn it into a Waterfall. Sharpedo is pretty powerful, and even my defensive Scrafty ain't going to take it great, so I'm just going to let Komodo die and bring in something I know can uh, kind of handle this a little better. That's going to be my special Machamp. Um, no, there's, I can just focus blast this thing. I know it's going to do heavy damage. Uh, he's not even... Starmie would be a decent switch, but even that's kind of risky. Uh, I can hit it really hard, and uh, Starmie wouldn't be able to one-hit me, so... He's going to protect turn one. He knows I'm Choice Spec, or at least Choice Banner, so I'm going to uh, test out what I'm going to do. Then he's going to go for Waterfall. Machamp, super bulky. He's going to take that pretty well. It does about half damage, and I'm going to be able to get that focus ball off nice and easy. I knew he was going to be Sash. There's no way. He would at least switch it if he wasn't Sash. Such an star me. So I'm going to take him down to 1 HP. At this point, I was almost positive that he was going to go ahead and use Destiny Bond. As much as I love my Machamp, he is a little gimmicky being special. Uh, so if I can take out a massive threat like Speed Boost Sharpedo... Uh, at the cost of this kind of gimmicky Machamp, that's something I'm okay with. So I'm gonna, I know when it was gonna happen, I was, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and use the Focus Blast. I'm gonna take him down, and he's gonna take me down. Um, that's a, that's, that's a trade-off I'm completely fine with right there. So now it's, uh, it's a pretty fast-paced match, four kills already. Um, we get to pick new leads here, essentially, at four on four. He's gonna go with Stoice, that's gonna be... Uh, his best option, honestly. I bought in Rhodes, hoping maybe he'd bring in Lapras or Swampert and give me a chance to set up on him. It doesn't work out, so I'm going to have to switch out immediately. I figured either a Water Pulse or an Aura Sphere were coming right there, so I'm going to switch into my Sash 8. Um, there was really no other switch I'm going to have. I forgot to click on the champ. Wow. The champ's dead, by the way. Uh, so he does end up going for Aura Sphere. That's going to hit really hard. I actually don't go down my Sash, which is interesting actually he's gonna switch out here um i actually thought he might go into starmie here but he ends up going into swampert as his wall obviously his more physically defensive set uh and i'm gonna get the close combat off it's gonna do a pretty decent chunk of damage here not enough to do it ko him but fortunately for me i am a mixed day and i do carry the grass knot i know that's gonna take him out from the amount of hp that they're like 75 percent or so and that is gonna wipe him out i don't think he was ready for that one and i get the easy kill that crit didn't mean anything obviously so now he's gonna bring in Starmie. I'm not. I'm. I'm not too keen here on switching. Um, so I'm just gonna mock punch. Obviously, I could like predict the Psy Shock, but I. I. I did not want to risk you know anything else taking a hit. It's a problem with this team. Not a lot of bulk on it, so I'm gonna have to let Ape die as well. And it's gonna be down to three on three here. He shows being a life orb set. 
there. Now, to this point, I feel like I've got pretty decent control. Here's where I really messed up. I carry Sucker Punch, but I really felt like that was too obvious. So I didn't go for it. I went for Poison Jab, hoping for him to switch and maybe get like a Poison or a, a uh, Tox or a Poison Touch on something, but he does he, he didn't do it. I overpredicted there heavily. Like, I really thought Sucker Punch was too obvious there, but it turns out not quite. And I go down, so I'm going to bring in Seth Rollins here. I have to make a comeback here somewhere. Earthquake doesn't do enough to kill. I was pretty upset by that. Um, and he's going to take me down to my sturdy, which is really bad, actually. Because uh, now I know, like, Lapras could Ice Shard or he's going to tank it with Blastoise or something. He's going to go down to the Life Orb there. That really meant nothing overall. And now he's going to bring in Lapras. On that switch, I knew Lapras was definitely going to be carrying Ice Shard. And that sock really wasn't going to serve him much of a purpose for the rest of the game. So I might as well just let him go there. And now it's up to Scrafty. So, quick note about my Scrafty. I made up his set myself. He's actually 252 HP, 252 defense. Uh, with Shed Skin and Dragon Dance, his point is to be bulking up the take. Pokemon on and be able to set up against them. Goes for Sing turn one. That was pretty interesting. I think Sing's like 60%. Uh, he gets it, unfortunately, but Rhodes gets the Shed Skin. All it really did was stop me from Dragon Dancing. Um, in my situation, actually, which we, uh, I actually thought that was pretty weird, um, in my situation, it would be in a game if he's switching to Blastoise. There's no way I'm to hit Mega Blastoise or Drain Punch. But in a situation, because most Scrafties are obviously going to be uh, attack and speed invested, so switching out into an obvious Dragon Dance and a Blastoise where he was probably about to get two hit wouldn't have really saved him. That's why he stayed in. He's going to try to sing, and, you know, his point was to try to sing there and then maybe curse his way up to being able to tank me. Um, but fortunately for me, it's not really going to work out. The Dragon Dance is going to do more than his curse is going to do. Uh, because obviously I have the super effective damage. Like I said, switching into Stoice would have won him the game, but it would have been a really risky play on an obvious Dragon Dance when he could have tried to put me to sleep turn one and try to set up curses on a more offensive Scrafty. Uh, so these, these next few turns end up just being a little bit of a balk fest here. He's going to keep cursing. I'm going to Dragon Dance a few times. I, I knew I wanted to Dragon Dance enough time to be able to two-hit Stoice, uh, because if I didn't two-hit Stoice, it was definitely game... Uh, it was up to whether or not, it, basically at this point I knew it was up to whether or not I could two hit him and uh, if I died in one aura sphere. So I do, I actually, I think I was at plus four at this point and I barely did half to him. So that shows, you know, that it's it's a, it's a huge deal. Obviously he cursed a couple times, but with that, you know, not offensive nature and not really any investment outside like the four EVs I have in it, makes a big deal there. Um, so now that I'm at pretty optimal HP here, I'm, I'm in a good position at this point. I'm going to go ahead and actually Dragon Dance one more time because I was pretty sure he could live another after the leftover. I think he would have lived another uh, Drain Punch really badly. Uh, and he goes for Sing at just as a, like, a last ditch effort to try to stop me here and it ends up missing. It does have that shaky accuracy. Um, so now actually, I think now I'm at plus four, maybe at plus five. I don't know. I wasn't keeping count. Um, so now one more Drain Punch, obviously I know he's going to kill him, he's going to go over Ice Shard just to do it. He, ha he has a few attack investments in there, but I'm really bulky, I don't take much from it. I'm going to Drain Punch him to death, and then based off of that, I end up getting to I think 170. Yeah, 170 exactly actually, and then the leftovers are going to bring him back to max HP. So it ends up being just a one-on-one -on -one shot here at the end. The only questions, like I said before, can I two hit this Stoice? He is bulky, I'm not invested. Uh, and can I live one Aura Sphere? I was more nervous about the Aura Sphere here. So Drain Punch right off the bat. It's going to it's gonna take him down. I think it did just about, yeah, just a little over half, man. So that last Dragon Dance meant, meant a lot. And then Aura Sphere coming through, and I cringe, and I live with 14 HP. It was at, like, that moment in the actual stream, it was at, I was, I was kind of terrified there. Because I wasn't sure I was going to live it. I actually thought he was going to kill me there. But Scrafty with that max HP... Coming through just barely to tank it, and obviously I'm going to be able to take him out with the last Drain Punch there. I wasn't clicking again. Whoops. Whatever. Anyway, uh, that ends up being the end of the battle. Scrafty comes through in the end and barely, barely gets me that victory by what ended up being, you know, 14 HP there. Very, very clutch. It's a very weird Scrafty set. I did make it up myself. Like I said, completely maxed out defensive-wise, HP-wise. 
um, with the main point of being able to set up against maybe weaker attackers, weaker physical attackers, and then trying to get some damage off that way. It's worked quite a few times. I've never run him outside a mono team, uh, but I have actually used him to beat flying teams. He works very well. There's almost always someone on the team where he can get a decent setup going. Lapras here, obviously, so I think so. I could have gotten one up against Swamp or two if I wanted to, um, depending on the Swamp or set, I guess. But. Anyway, guys, that is going to be the end of the battle, so thank you guys for taking the time out of the day to watch my video. I really do appreciate it, guys. If you enjoyed this battle, make sure you hit that like button at the bottom of the screen. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube as well if you want to be a part of the Ramen Nation. And if you guys haven't been able to check out my live stream, I encourage you to check it out at twitch.tv slash xchriscobain. Yeah, there'll be a link in the description. It's a really fun time. I stream six days a week. It's the best way to battle me. I interact with all the viewers, so it'll be your good, best chance for you to really talk to me live. And it's an overall, it's just a great time. So if you guys want to do that, that'd be awesome. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. So I will see you guys in the next video.